Transmitting high atop of Florida's peninsula at 108 feet. This is Alpha Mike, and you are listening to episode 197 on Radar Cop Podcast. Today's episode, Thomas Wool, Why We Should Listen. Part of the Buccaneers series, Mr. Thomas Swole will carry us through economics, the way of thinking via data, and how to conquer a liberal. So you're probably wondering, how do you contact us? Well, it's RaiderCop.com. There you can listen to all our episodes from 1 to 197. Or our official website, RaiderCopNation.com. There you can get more information, news, and updates on this platform. Of course, we're on social media. MeWe, Wimkin, Clubhub, Gab, Parler, and... Believe it or not, still on Facebook because we believe in what Governor DeSantis, governor of the state of Florida, has told us that our rights would be protected from the villain of Facebook. On a personal story, and it's never easy to discuss, but um, I had to travel down to Miami for the funeral of my grandmother that died just short of 103 years old. She had uh, received the coronavirus and it afflicted not only her, but two of my aunts, my uncle and a cousin. My aunt had died several weeks earlier and my grandmother short of 103 had a valiant fight with it, but unfortunately, she died. And uh, so I had to make some changes on our schedule today. 2020, 2021 has been a most difficult time for the elderly in my family with a lot of uh, injury, sickness, and death. So we, I keep all my family members in prayer, and it is... Um, A lot of people out there going through the same thing. Today's story, we're going to dive into Mr. Thomas Wool, an individual that has impacted millions and millions of Americans on the proper, and I'll repeat that again, the proper way of thinking. There's a lot of stereotyping, and people like to say a lot of one-liners, And they'll even get red in the face and argue with you that it's absolutely true. But Mr. Thomas Wool has learned and taught us that you look at data. And based on that data and history, imagine the two, history and economics combined. This is something that has really never been done by the intelligentsia in America until Mr. Thomas Wool came along. You see, data doesn't lie. The one-liner from, invented by the talking heads, that does lie. And he carries us through different world history and ethnicities of people. And most of the time when he comes up with these swole quotes, it disturbs a lot of people on the left. Because there is no real rational thinking. Mr. Thomas Wool would write for many, many years on different types of stories that would drive the intelligence world in America and the political world in America upside down. We'll look at some of those famous quotes as well. And where the Thomas Wool fan club is today, as he is in his 
90th year of birth. We can't get enough of him because of the fact that what he's saying is pure truth. Often, not too many people argue with him, especially in the media, because you're not going to win the argument because Mr. Thomas Wool is backed by data, facts. And he's often said to liberals, don't let a mere thing like facts get in the way of this argument. And this is what we're going to learn and dive into today. And speaking of facts and speaking of those things that impact many people, the Word of God has always been something that will move us in a spiritual direction. So today I want to take uh, a look at the book of James, chapter 1, verse 22 to 24, and it says... But be doers of the world and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the world and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. James 1, verse 22 to 24. I thought that that verse was very fitting for today's show with Mr. Thomas Wall. Today, people forget who they are and what they stand for. They pick up talking points more than pure facts. As always, you can le- hear the word of the Lord here and twice a month on a section that we're going to deem a wall Monday starting in May. Currently it's the word series and it's 30 minutes or less of the powerful word of God for your spiritual life because without God in your life, things become much more difficult and almost impossible. You can pick that up on RadioCopNation.com. There's a section on there that will take you to test everything 1521, and there you can hear the Word of God for your life. Mr. Thomas Wohl is the subject at hand that we have today. We're going to dive in of who he was, where he came from, how he became an impactful person in millions of people's lives, from poverty to education to serving in the Korean War and picking up a profession of photography out of all this, Mr. Thomas Wall will take us through a journey in studying who humans really are, facts, how to talk in plain truths, not just talking points like many people do. For you to understand who we're going to discuss today, I'm going to read three quotes, and then we're going to jump on the bus and talk about Mr. Thomas Wool. Quote number one. The first lesson of economics is scarcity. There is never enough of anything to fully satisfy all those who want it. The first lesson of politics is to disregard the first lesson of economics. The cost of history is determined by what people do with their opportunities. And lastly, it's amazing how much panic one Honest man can spread among a multitude of hypocrites, Mr. Thomas Swole.
boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to the main event. Born in Gastonia, North Carolina, June 30th, 1930, Thomas Wall's life would become difficult from birth. Being poor, his father would die before Thomas's birth, and his mother would die at childbirth. Thomas would be adopted by a great aunt and raised by this woman and her two adult daughters. Thomas would learn the value of everything he had in life because of the poverty that had befallen him as a child. At the age of eight, his great aunt would move to New York City, the section of Harlem on St. Nicholas Avenue and 146th Street. At eight years old, Thomas would discover the big city. Never really having much as a child, things like televisions were unheard of in the Swole household. He would have a telephone at one time and a radio, reaching the big time. As a child, a family friend would mentor him in his early development and the friend Eddie Mapp would take young Thomas Swole and introduce him to things like a library. At that point, Thomas understood the value of a book and of reading. Why was this so important? If it would have been delayed into his teen years, he never probably would have developed into the person that he is today. Dropping out of Stuyvesant High School, Thomas would serve in the United States Marine Corps and during the Korean War, taking an MOS of photographer. During that era, photography was very important to the military mission because it documented actual battle that could be studied later on. What young Thomas would learn in the Marine Corps would carry with him his entire life, not only the value of discipline, carrying out the mission, but also photography. Thomas Wool would be a renowned photographer as well. He would get an honorable discharge from the United States Marine Corps and start his life as a civil servant's servant in the city of Washington, D.C. During this time, a young Thomas Wool was a known Marxist. That's right, you heard it correctly. Understanding those values based on the talking points that he had learned as a young person. He, t he would attend night school at Howard University in D.C., and score very high on the college board exam. This high score would give young Thomas Wool an opening into entering Harvard University in 1958 and attaining a BA in economics. As I said, during his 20s, he would be a known Marxist, but he, one of his early writings his professional publications, he would write sympathy examinations, a Marxist thought versus a Marxist-Leninist practice. You see, young Thomas Wool, working in government, understood that Marxism was complete garbage. He continued his scholastic studies and he would understand that the minimum wage, as much as it was professed by the left to help the poor, the data would indicate 
and he would learn to believe that it actually hurt the poor. Today, we've got a presidency that's talking about a $15 an hour minimum. And if we learned anything from Mr. Thomas Wool, this will hurt the poor, not help. He would receive a doctor, a doctoring in philosophy and economics from the University of Chicago and study under renowned Professor George Stingler, which was a Nobel Peace Prize uh, winner in economics. He would go on to have another mentor in his life, Mr. Milton Friedman, which is another Nobel Prize winner in economic science in 1976. The science of economics is not very well received, especially within political circuits. Reason being, the study of economics got in the way of the talking point because it brought data, truth, to the argument. Thomas Wall would go from a professor to a fellow at the Hoover Institute in 1980. Although Mr. Thomas Wall was a professor, he was limited in how much he could teach and how many people he could reach out to. Young minds were polluted with garbage. Thus, Thomas Wall taking the position with the Hoover Institute would not reach just a couple of hundred people, but millions upon millions. Given the opportunity to write what he wanted, when he wanted, would change the hearts and minds of millions of Americans. This would be the turning point on the Thomas Wall of today. He reached his mark. He would come on on shows with William F. Buckley, the firing line, in the 80s. And his wisdom would be now carried out through television, reaching millions more. The basic facts of economics could never be ducked. Therefore, arguing with Mr. Thomas Sowell was very difficult because he had one thing in his tool chest, the truth. While talking point heads only had sayings with absolutely zero proof. He'd go on to write articles in the Harvard Institute, but also he would eventually make that come to an end. He went out and ventured all over the world with his camera, studying photography and understanding the value of photography he would mix that in with world history and economics. Truly fascinating stuff. He was on a mission, and his mission was, why are people the way they are based on history, economics? And he would capture it all on his camera. He'd reach out all over the world studying all kinds of races it would become even much more difficult for the left to even think that they could argue with Mr. Thomas Sowell. He once said in an article, in an interview, that years later, he was corrected by a fact checker, checker that he was incorrect in the finding. And when he was confronted with that, he said it, it gave him great happiness to know that he was wrong and that for the first time, the left was actually doing their homework. This is the magnitude of who this man is to millions of people. Today, the media doesn't want to talk to him. They don't want to 
really understand his writings or his books, which are in the almost hundreds. The reason they don't want to deal with it is because it deals with the truth. And the media doesn't want to know the truth. So the best way to deal with Mr. Thomas Wall is to ignore him, but not to the millions and millions that have followed him, not only in their college careers, but YouTubers and social media have picked up on Mr. Thomas Wall, from rap artists to young minorities all around this country. They've looked and said, who is this man with this charisma? that when he talks, he speaks boldly. That is Mr. Thomas Swole. Unfortunately, it would come to a sad end that he would stop writing his articles on December 27th, 2016, putting an end to his writings. Of course, making the media extremely happy, millions of his fans would now say, what's next? What do you mean he's going away? But he didn't go away. His interviews during the years now would transfer to social media and especially YouTube, reaching multitudes of millions of followers. He had a strong background with his photography and it was an escape it was an escape from the reality and the BS as Mr. Thomas Swole would often say people would argue a point today that was argued 20, 30 and 40 years ago with the same arguments and 30 and 40 years later they're still arguing the same point basically being a bunch of BS So the escape of the photography was something very much he needed to refuel, re-engage, and again, re-educate millions. His publications would reach up to almost 300 newspapers all across the world. What he was saying was transmitting, even if the left didn't like it, even if the media didn't like it, he was backed by data, truth. And as such, it was hard to argue with Mr. Thomas Wall. He would, of course, now become the craze of social media that he is today. Although he stopped his writings in 2016, it didn't stop who he was. And from what people believe was a goodbye, it was actually an introduction from the world of intelligentsia to the world of normal human beings. Saying, huh? That's not what they told me. And now learning the truth. Let's examine for a minute some of the famous quotes of Mr. Thomas Swole. If you have always believed that everyone should play by the same rules and be judged by the same standards that would have gotten you labeled a radical 60 years ago, a liberal 30 years ago, and a racist today. It has long been believed that the sight of a good-looking woman lowers a man's IQ by at least 20 points. A man who doesn't happen to have 20 points to spare can be in big trouble. (laughs) I have never understood why it is greed to want to keep the money you have earned but not greed to want to take someone else's money and it keeps on folks it keeps on it is the gift that never stops 
Here's another quote. It takes considerable knowledge just to realize the existence of your own ignorance. It's bad enough that you, excuse me, it, it is bad enough that so many people believe things without any evidence. What is worse is that some people have no conception of evidence and regard facts as just someone else's opinion. Very true in today's society. Another quote, our tax system penalizes those who are producing wealth in order to subsidize those who are only consuming it. Basic economics in your face. Another quote, what do you call it when someone steals money scarce secretly? Theft. What do you call it when someone takes money by force? Robbery. What do you call it when a politician takes someone else's money and gives it to someone likely to vote for him? Social justice. Mm-mm-mm. Here's another quote. Liberals seem to assume that if you don't believe in their particular pol- political solution, then you don't really care about the people that they claim to want to help. The problem isn't that Johnny can't read. The problem is, isn't is even that Johnny can't think. The problem is that Johnny doesn't know what thinking is. He's confused it with feelings. It's hard to imagine a more stupid and more dangerous way of making decisions than putting those decisions in the hands of people who pay no price for being wrong. It's amazing, folks. It just keeps coming at you. To say that wealth in America is so unfair distributed in America, as Ronald Dorkins does, is grossly misleading when most wealth in the United States is not distributed at all. People create it, earn it, save it, and spend it. The word racism racism is like ketchup. It can be put on practically anything, and demanding evidence makes you a racist. Mr. Thomas Wall would also encounter a personal issue with one of his children, and he started this issue with young children not talking at an early age, labeled by a lot of people as artistic and so forth. But he disagreed with the point of not being able to talk with being able to think. Reaching out to professors at Harvard University, his old alma mater, they agreed with him. He would write a book that would impact a lot of Americans. The book is called Lake Talking Children by Thomas Wohl. People would read it because they were having their own experience with their children. You see, in common and simple English, they weren't being bamboozled by some leftist doctor into believing your child is retarded and this is what they need to take for the rest of their life. It was a journey in teaching parents because your child took so long to talk doesn't mean he's not a thinker. And talking would eventually occur. This is who Thomas Wall was. Never satisfied with just the answer. He had to dig into the data. Why are things the way they are? The mathematical conclusion would always give you the correct answer. Just basically saying that the minorities were poor because they were disproportionately not giving it a chance in life did not cut the mustard with Thomas Swole. 
In fact, he proves, based on data, that after slavery in the Civil War, blacks were more successful. Unemployment was a lot lower. Blacks with two parents in the household, mother and father, had less divorce rates and less problems in the family. Now, when the left stood up in the 60s and they were going to create this great social economic revolution, they developed things that would handicap minorities, such as Medicaid, welfare, and so forth. Now people weren't so eager to study, to learn, and do hard work. They were dependent on a government. Mr. Thomas Wall has been arguing this point forever in a day. Today, at the age of 90, he continues to say the hypocrisy on the left is just making minorities dumber. And minorities are starting slowly to wake up and listen to Mr. Thomas Wolfe. Not a man that was born with a golden spoon. Not a man that was not born with the mother and father relationship. But he was nurtured in love, caring, and understanding to make him the person he is today. Undoubtedly, you can't hide the fact that his experiences with many mentors in studying made him who he is today too. And, of course, his military service showed him how to fight, drive, and move forward. And that discipline would make him who he is. And millions are have a great gratitude to who he is today. It is so often that the media is just a talking point and talking heads of the left. They dumb down society. The Hispanics are a certain way. They're immigrants. They're poor. They have no brain power. Um, Black Americans uh, have never had an opportunity. They're always being uh, the racism card on top of them. And on and on and on. But Mr. Thomas Wool would, as I said earlier, dive into who are these people in the world? Who are Europeans? Who are Asians? Who are black Americans? Who are Africans? Who are Latino Americans? And he would study numbers and who they are and where they came from because their social makeup and geography would make who they are. Another point that he would always make that people often say this group and that group took over a specific industry which Mr. Thomas Wall would tell us over and over again. They didn't take over anything. They placed something in place that was never there. Many, for example, many Europeans would come from European countries and they in turn would enter the new world in America where something was missing. An example of that was Steinway, the famous piano maker. Growing up in Germany, it was so difficult to create something because you had to go through layers and layers of bureaucracy and protocols. He, in turn, turned his talents from his native country to America. And within little to no time, he would have great success that even today exists with the Steinway piano. So if you look at Thomas Wall's position, he didn't create it. It was in place. He just took it to a place that didn't have it. This is the type of thinking of Mr. Thomas Swole. Today, minorities would 
benefit so much from those things that he has taught us. Let's look at a couple of more of his quotes as we wind this down. Here we go. The welfare state is the oldest con game in the world. First, you take people's money away quietly, and then you give some of it back to them flamboyantly. If you are not prepared to use force to defend civilization, then be prepared to accept barbarism. Here's one of those quotes that you've got to put on your thinking cap. No matter how disastrously some policies have turned out, anyone criticizes it can expect to hear, but what would you replace it with? When you put out a fire, what do you replace it with? You got to think about that one. Here's a funny one. What are the consequences of such notions as entitlements is that people who have contributed nothing to society feel that society owes them something, apparently just for being nice enough to grace us with their presence. Here's one for our Bernie bros. Socialism in general has a record of failure so brilliant that only an intellectual could ignore it or evade it. Here's another one that makes you think. When, when you want to help people, you tell them the truth. When you want to help yourself, you tell them what they want to hear. And lastly, compassion is the use of public funds to buy votes. This is Mr. Thomas Wool. He has impacted many of us in such ways. If you've never heard of Mr. Thomas Wool, I encourage you to listen to him. Go to YouTube. Go to those avenues that you can see who exactly he was or is. Also, study his books. There are almost hundreds of them that you will grab such knowledge that it will leave you uh, pretty scratching your head because you would say to yourself, this is not what they taught me. Here's some a list of some of his books and we'll list... Uh, you know, some of them on the show notes. He's got a book on Marxism. Find out the truth about that. A Professional Odyssey. There's another book. A Conflict of Visions. A Man of Letters. Uh, I, we discussed the one he wrote about kids, late-talking children. Uh, some of the big books he's written is the issue with racism. He's written many books about that. Discrimination and Disparities by Mr. Thomas Swole. Basic Economics is another book he's written. And we can go on and on and on. When you pick up the book, you pick up the power of this man's level of intellect. Again, how did he develop this? Well, through knowledge, through studying. Somebody asked him once, and we'll put a clip of it down in the show notes, what made him change from being a Marxist, and he said, facts. Don't let facts get in the way of your stupidity. This is the basic lesson that we learn from Mr. Thomas Swole. What's up next? Well, we've made a couple of changes on our programming notes. We're going to allow this episode, 197, to go uh, into all the way up to March 3rd. And we're going to start with our Wise Guy series. A couple of changes we did on the roster. So up next is Tony Ducks, episode 198 on the Wise Guy series. You know... There's a battle for America, and we're seeing it every day with some of the stupidity and the media, an accomplice of this theft 
of America's thought process and intellectual levels. People like Mr. Thomas Swole are champions in this fight because, you see, he didn't just start yesterday. He started many, many years ago. And we are blessed to know who he is today. Don't forget some other program notes. We're going to have a lot of shows in the month of March with Kilo Sierra about guns, guns, guns as President Bimbo Biden and uh, his cabinet get ready to try to take our guns. We're going to have some shows on the subcompact Glock and some other issues like Don't Mess With Texas. What's up with Texas? Well, Listen to us in March and you'll understand what we're talking about. Where I can go with my gun and how I should carry my gun. An American right under the Second Amendment. As always, it is my honor and pleasure to be your host on Raider Cop Podcast. Continue to pray for yourself because without you in the game, we have nothing. Continue to pray for your family, for your community, for the law enforcement agencies that serve you, and most importantly, for the United States of America. This is Alpha Mike, and I'm out.